In the 70s, in the United States, we did clean up quite a few lakes and we did reduce the air pollution in quite a few cities. But there was uh, essentially no progress on the global problems. Things like climate change, depletion of the marine fisheries, the ocean fisheries, population growth, and so forth. There has always been the notion that we will be able to sustain our current trajectory in living standards and material consumption. And, so, and moreover, that all the poor people in the world are gonna be able to catch up with us. The entire discipline of economics, macroeconomics, is based on the assumption that output is gonna to continue to grow, living standards are gonna to continue to grow, and so forth. The economy can't keep growing forever. The idea that somehow the gross domestic product of the United States should double in the next 50 or 100 years or something is just nutty. Economists have clearly shown that once you have your basic needs fulfilled, uh, that further economic growth and consumption doesn't supply any more satisfaction. Americans aren't any happier today or more satisfied than they were in 1950, despite the growth we've had in our economy. Most of us don't have an experience of growth the way it's impacting on the planet because you get up every morning and look around and it seems to be pretty much the same as it was yesterday. Our species just naturally tends to assume that change happens more or less linearly. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. But in fact, the problems that are causing environmental deterioration are, arise out of exponential growth, which is where instead of going up by a constant amount over some time period, it goes up by a percentage over some time period. I've tried to illustrate what this means with a very simple example. If I bring out a tablecloth, I show it to everybody, I fold it four times. So I'm doubling the thickness of the tablecloth four times. And I let everybody see it and I say, suppose that that is half an inch thick, not much. If I were to fold it another 15, 16 times, how thick would it be? Now, I can't actually, but suppose I could do that. When you keep doubling the tablecloth, of course, it's growing exponentially. And after 21 folds, it'll be about a mile thick. If I double it another five or six times, it extends out past the edge of space. Continuing that process rather quickly gives you amazingly big numbers. With just 39 folds, it's already shooting past the moon. That's how quickly you get to very large numbers uh, when a process grows exponentially. Our book, Limits to Growth, was the first concrete effort using a computer to look at trends that unfold over decades, even a century. We were trying to understand long-term physical demands on the planet. And in the 70s, we were thinking that probably in the period 2010 to 2030 was when the planet would start to encounter limits. And that when you hit the limits, the tendency is to overshoot them and collapse, not to even out in a nice orderly fashion. The book was officially released in March of 1972, and the inaugural event was a press conference in Washington, D.C. The, the book was rather quickly translated into 35 languages and sold millions. It was a phenomenon. Here is what Dr. Meadows' computer shows. 
Since the year 1900, the Earth's resources there at the top of the chart have been steadily used up as population, food consumption, and production of goods have soared. Ahead of us, sometime after the year 2000, this computer study foresees calamity. Resources drop more steeply, and food and production follow suit. Population continues to expand for perhaps one more generation, then collapses calamitously as deprivation takes hold. I remember the first time I saw that NASA picture of Earth taken over the moon. That picture somehow had the capacity to just wrench your mind around so you thought about things in a different way. Our curves did that for a lot of people. For the first time, they could start to see the future consequences of what they were doing now, and for many people, that was really shocking. I went to the first presentation. I thought it was potent and powerful. The thesis that growth had to be limited to preserve the quality of the environment, the quality of life. It's a thesis, a theme that I still agree with today. There are limits to growth and we're bumping against them right now. Civilizations have crashed repeatedly in the past. Egypt, Mesopotamia, the classic Maya, Greek civilization, and so on. The thing that's so scary today is that we have, for the first time, a global civilization that is doing what many of those other ones did, building a huge population, and abusing its environment without any thought to the consequences. <laughs>